Hello again, video friends. This is my Prosif, uh with video four of my new account here. I wanted to jump straight into quests, into the first flag. Uh, as you can see, I'm level 13 now, just by going through the castle on heroic mode a few times. I autoed uh, probably five or six heroic modes and gained tons of levels and now have some pretty decent gear as well. So I also recommend doing this and gaining a few levels prior to going to your first flag because now I have lots of beefy stats to just go in here and basically I can most likely auto this. Uh, one thing right off the bat is uh, to answer a couple questions from a fellow gamer who asked the questions of what familiars to catch early on. Uh, obviously you have the boo and the bat automatically. That's just by default. Uh, from then on, my recommendation is to only focus on rare familiars. And how you tell the rare is whenever you encounter them and they offer to join your team, their name will show up in blue. If we can try to catch one of these blobs here, I will show you what I'm talking about. But if it is a green pet, it's only common and not really worth wasting 2,000 gold. When you're first starting off, gold is hard to come by. And if you waste your gold trying to catch everything, you're going to be out of gold pretty quickly. Uh, after I finish this flag, I'm going to focus on some of the questions you see here. I talked with a player in game. He he asked me a, a decent list of questions, and I, I will adjust those in this video. I do appreciate the questions you guys send me, or that be on my forum, so you guys hit me up in game. Uh, it's always nice to reach out and help the other players as they come up, because there's a lot of stuff that when you first start out you just don't realize. Alright, so that flag was quite easy, simply because we grinded a little bit in that castle. Alright, so this is immediately a question that the player asks. Uh, let's see. About joining a guild. Yeah, right here. Should I join a guild immediately or wait until I'm stronger for a stronger guild? Uh, the answer is it's completely up to you. If I click find here, I can apply to a few of these guilds. And I can apply to as many as I like. But I own a guild myself, and I know for a fact that sometimes the guild applications simply go ignored. So your best bet, if you want to join a guild, simply go to chat, type in new player looking for a guild, please invite. And you simply wait, and you'll check your invites here. Looks like this person invited us already. Oh, the guild is full right now, so we'll wait until they drop one person, and we can drop, we can join that guild immediately. But early on, guilds aren't super important. The guild will provide you higher level players to use in dungeons. However, if you're in town, like we discussed in the last video and you ask people to join your team as a friend, I'm already using a level 134 person before I even had the ability to join a guild. Uh, in this video, I'd like to unlock PvP, so we're going to jump right back into the next flag. Again, we're putting whoever usually has the highest health usually goes in the front here. If Boo Boo, Boo had it, I would put him in front, but since my guy has grinded a few who are up dungeons, I'll just put myself in front. Again, I could manual this, but I'm going to auto just because I have the staff to do so. If you're struggling in a dungeon, and this is another question that comes up, you need to go back to the castle and grind the highest setting that you can complete. If you're struggling on normal or hard, you need to go to chat or go to town and ask for higher level players to join your team. If you get players that are above level, say 20, 30, or 40, you can probably do these dungeons on auto 
and just grind until you gain levels. It doesn't take a lot of, a lot of hard work. And that comes back to another question he asks here. And he says, I wonder, what is the most effective way to fight and where? Always heroic stages with friends, always the 30 energy ones. And he's referring to uh, heroic mode castles. And my answer is yes. The 30 heroic, 30 energy heroic castles are the most efficient way to gain experience and gear. Uh, some players would argue that you should be trying to advance in flags at all costs, but my point is here, if you try to advance in a flag and you die, that's 10 energy wasted that you could have used towards gaining another level or two and then flying through the flag easy. Uh, if you go into these flags on your own before leveling up a few times in the dungeon, you'll notice that things are just a lot harder than normal. You notice here I'm taking almost no damage, my pets are healing me on their own, and I'm just blowing through everything. This is because I simply spent the time in the heroic mode dungeons, spending the 30 energy each. And that's another thing too, as far as running out of energy, I did take breaks. So once my energy was gone, instead of purchasing more with real life money, I simply walk away from the game, wait a couple hours and come back, and my energy bar will be full. Okay, it looks like we unlocked PvP here. I guess level 13 or that flag is the case. Uh, battle other players during special rewards. All right, we're going to walk through PvP here. So here you can look at the players. You can kind of look at their stats and see how they compare to you. And then you can fight one. Now it looks like we can add a, another familiar, but we don't have one yet. So we need to catch one ASAP. Okay, so our, our player is a lot better than Boo Boo, and he has almost the same health. So we're going to put him in the front to be our tank, just in case we don't want to die. Alright, so okay, yes. Now, I'm going to take it off auto, just to explain. Uh, starting off, it's going to be pretty simple. You're just going to want to single target the player in the front so you can kill him quickly. You have the ability to attack all, but if you at attack the front guy first and kill him, now it's a two versus three battle, and you can just auto it and win pretty easily. Uh, PvP is basically another way to gain some experience. You start gaining these uh, bronze coins, which you can later trade in for various items. Uh, my recommendation is... Once you understand PvP, you can wager two tickets at a time, you can click play, find someone that looks like they have reasonable gear. You'll notice if you look at a few of these, some of them may have pets already. So for example, this guy's level 20 and has far more stats than us at level 13, so we don't want to battle him. This person's about our same level, so we'll click fight. And let's see if we can beat them as well. So we'll take it off auto. Okay, so they have four familiars, so it's going to be a lot harder for us. So we're going to focus on the tree first. Try to kill him. Okay, so if our front guy is about to die, we can click a switch. Move our character into front. Let him take a little damage. Okay, so I'm going to do the damage to all. Get some more damage out there. Alright, so it looks like we are having a rough time here. The back can self-heal, so I'm going to let him take a little damage. I'm going to let my pet heal me. Drain life. Alright, so as you can tell, you clearly need that third familiar. So it's looking like, there we go. So with a little bit of moving around, you're going to want to use this switch button. I don't think you can use potions yet. Nope. So you can use the switch to make sure that people that aren't taking damage move up and do take damage. That way you have better chances to kill the other team. If you notice, if I, I would have kept the same uh, member in the front, he would have died for sure. Uh, so before we wager more tickets on this, I'm going to go back to... 
uh, quest here and try another flag, see if we can catch another familiar. Uh, let's answer one more question. How do you approach PvP as a starting player on his first day? Simply try and fight until you get stuck. Some nice tactics to progress fast and get better ranking slash gear. So another tip for PvP before I jump in here is you can open up your inventory, look at your gear, and you can actually take off gear in order to fight less lesser level players. So one way to do this is to, for example, take off our helmet. This will lower our item level, which will enable us to go to PvP and fight. And now we're versus level six players. Now, the, the thing is, their stats are gonna be a lot less than yours, simply because you took your gear off. Now we actually don't need that extra pet we can battle and see how much damage we do. Okay, so the players in the front, that's going to be by default because this player isn't even in PvP yet. So we're just going to annihilate the front guy. Uh, again, if you get to about half health, you're going to want to switch out. And as soon as we kill him, it's now two versus three. We can auto, and we just won the match. And I, this is my biggest recommendation because ranking up in PvP isn't important early on. What is important is gaining that right there, the XP. So you get 150 XP plus some cool coins uh, for each win. And you can continue to do that. Let's take a look at rewards here. We're rank 2600. It looks like the top 3000, I believe, will get a accessory this week. So just by doing what I just did, I basically qualified myself for an accessory that I don't even have on my person yet. So I don't have any accessories at all, so any of these being one would be a huge upgrade for me. So that is my answer for that PvP question. Uh, another one here, how and when do I get more PvP tickets? And this works the same as energy. If you highlight it, you'll see a number. This is minutes and seconds, and whenever that is down to zero, you will earn one PvP ticket, and it will fill up your bar. And basically, you just take breaks. If you, if you want to play the game most efficiently, what you'll want to do is do a quest, do a PvP. Later, you can unlock the gauntlet and the raid, and you'll just take your time moving from one to the other in a in a big circle and you'll be able to play the game a lot longer also the free stuff down here you can watch these videos as I've explained before some of the videos don't work properly so you can click close and watch again to get the, the video that works for you it may take a couple tries but if it's not working after three or four you can always click skip that's fine so I'll skip this one and another one will populate in a few minutes. All right, so I'll put my gear back on. We'll do one more flag and end this video. All right, so now we're ba battling a uh, boss. So every three flags are gonna battle a uh, much more difficult boss. And you wanna pay attention on the boss if you're not leveled enough to kill them easily on auto. Look at the questions here. Uh, what familiars did you concentrate on? Found some good stuff. The other guides too, though. Do you bribe them always or save your gold? My recommendation is, as a new player, always save your gold unless it's a rare pet or a familiar. For example, Tubbo early on. I saw him in the castle. I did wager 2,000 gold to try to catch him. You can use gems, but I highly recommend that you do not use gems because the gems will, after level 50 plus, be very helpful in helping you earn legendary gear, which will be a lot more used and valuable than a random rare pet now, early on. You have to keep in mind your leveling. 
So the stuff that you earn now and you think it's important now will be almost irrelevant in five to ten levels. Uh, I also get a question of uh, what, what familiar should I aim for? If you are going to get a couple common ones, uh, I think you just saw the, the tree pet, the tree familiar. I believe his name's Professor Oak or something like that. The tree. He is a good tink. So are these little mushrooms. I believe they're rare. You always want one familiar that has a decent health pool so that he can go on the front. Okay, so we unlock the next castle. We can go ahead and beat the normal mode real quick. While it's running, I'm going to make sure I didn't miss any questions. Uh, as far as the guild, again, you can apply this one, or if you really want to add a new aspect to the game and you've never tried, you can actually create your own guild. And I actually recommend trying this because it's actually pretty fun. So what you do, you would come down here to the guild tab, you would click create, and just walk through the steps. It's only 2,500 gold. You should have that just by doing your dungeons. And what you can do is go through town, click friends here, suggest, and you can start inviting these people to your guild. Because see, right here, they're not even in the guild. So you could, you could friend them, you could invite them to your guild, and you can start filling your guild up with newer players. And before you know it, you have a high level guild and you'll be the owner. So that's another thing to consider. But as far as getting into one, and the importance. Uh, I wouldn't stress it too much. You can earn certain currency in the guild to allow yourself to buy pets and accessories, which is nice. But it's not super important until you're above level, let's see, 40 plus. The biggest thing, again, is just higher level players that are in that guild. You would be able to use them as friends in the dungeon. So here's the main boss. You can read this if you like. Uh, I'll take it off auto just so we can see the boss. You can catch the bosses, but it's a lot harder and usually you would wind up paying the gems for them. Uh, so it looks like he's going to die pretty easily. Again, the benefits of having overpowered friends. Let's see if he drops any good gear. Uh, not today, but we did get a level, so we'll go ahead and add that to our attack. Again, I'm adding only into attack. You can see plus 13 here, while these have zero. This is going to allow me to do a lot more damage when I'm on the flag levels without my friends. Let's see if we got into a guild. Okay, so this one's level 59. That's 15 players, except. Alright, we're into a guild. They have 16 players now, counting me. Looks like I'm the only one online right now. Uh, looks like a pretty active guild. The longest AFK is two days. So I'm going to go ahead and be kind and introduce myself. Hello, friends. Thanks for the fight. You always want to be courteous and, and, and thankful when you get into one of these because it may, la it may give a lasting impression on the guild leader and you could call this home for quite some time. Uh, we'll look at the shop here. Again, down here is your honor that you'll earn just by doing dungeons. And you can see tons of stuff here that you could purchase. One of the things automatically that I go to instantly is the accessory here. But you can see its stats, which is really nice. And all you have to do is grind a few dungeons and you can buy one of these. I'm going to finish out this castle and end the video here. It's getting a little long. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and level up a bit on the side. I'm going to do heroic mode in this dungeon, uh, probably till I'm level 20, and then I'm just going to finish zone 1. Uh, as I start zone 2, I'm going to start covering gauntlet and some of the harder difficult flags. Uh, towards the end of zone 1, you will see some harder levels, some harder gameplay, and into zone Two, you're going to see the ice levels, which have penguins, etc. And these can hit pretty hard. My recommendation is to aim for level 20 prior to getting to zone 2. So that means going to the dungeon and grinding and grinding and grinding. 
So now that we beat normal, I would do hard and then I would grind heroic, repeatedly doing this, this difficulty until I gain level 20. You can try earlier levels, but remember if you die, you're just wasting time. Alright, this is from Recursive Out, and I will keep you updated with the next video shortly. Thanks.